Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. I hope you are all doing well. Now let's jump into today's video, which is about visiting the Jewish Refugees Museum in Shanghai during World War II. The museum is located in a neighborhood that was once home to Jewish refugees. Outside the museum, there is a memorial wall with the names of all those Jewish refugees inscribed on it, alongside a Jewish synagogue. I think many, like myself, may not have no idea that during the early days of World War II, more than 18,000 Jews, depending on their chosen route, covered a distance of 10 to 1,000 kilometers to seek refuge in Shanghai. But this event really happened. Perhaps you didn't know that before World War II, two groups of Jews were residing in Shanghai. The first group consisted of Sephardic Jews who were initially drawn to Hong Kong in the 1840s under the protection of the Treaty of Nanjing in 1842. The population reached approximately a thousand people by the 1930s. The second group consisted of over 4,500 Jews who had fled from the Bolshevik Revolution and the civil war in the Soviet Union to Shanghai via Harbin. The most important question that might arise is why China, with such a long distance, became a refuge destination during that time. Although there were many challenges, such as cultural differences, tough economic conditions, and the war between China and Japan, including the Japanese control of parts of Shanghai, there was a strong reason for this migration. The problem was that during the Avian Conference was convened July 1938, the Allied countries, including America, the Soviet Union, and Britain, along with some neutral nations, decided to shut their borders to Jewish refugees because of rising tensions with Germany. Shanghai was the only port in the world that didn't require a visa for entry. Therefore, for many Jewish refugees, Shanghai became the sole escape route from the Holocaust. During this time, several European ambassadors, in order to allow Jewish refugees to pass through intermediate countries on their way to Shanghai, issued visas for a large number of them. This included Jan Zawartendik, the acting Dutch council in Lithuania, and Shinui Sugihara, a Japanese diplomat stationed in Lithuania, and Dr. Hu Feng Shan, who served as the council general of the Republic of China in Vienna at the time. When their ship reached Shanghai, their initial rescue had been done, but they still faced many challenges, the first being basic necessities of life, namely shelter and food. They, who were from Germany, Poland and Austria, coming from different social backgrounds and forming the most diverse Jewish group, were placed on a truck and taken to Hankou. Then they were placed in a red brick refugee shelter which used to be a school. There are pictures and documents showcasing several significant Jewish rescue and relief organizations that worked to assist refugees resettling in Shanghai. For example, the Committee for the Assistance of European Jewish Refugees, referred to as CFA, was developed by Horace Kaduri and Michael Spielman. The CFA raised about $3 million to support the Jewish refugees in Shanghai. Horace Kaduri started the Shanghai Jewish Youth Association and the school. He urged young people to stay hopeful, stressing that through training is key to building a successful life in the new setting. The other organization was the American Jewish Joint Distribution Committee, JDC, 
which was represented by Laura Margolis. She helped organize educational programs, provide social services, and advocate for the rights of Jewish refugees in Shanghai. Her efforts assisted numerous refugees in surviving and rebuilding their lives during challenging times. In the museum, there are many accounts of the hardships and pressures that refugees faced during their stay, especially due to occupation of Shanghai by Japan and Japan's alliance with Nazi Germany. Some other parts focus on the lives of specific refugees, displaying their photos, objects, and the personal belongings. This part covers the refugees' occupations during their asylum, significant moments in their lives, the school founded by Mr. Kaduri and its achievements, as well as the special memories left by these refugees, including the story of a handbag awaiting its owner. The story goes like this. According to Jean Wenjin's memoir, published in 2015, her grandfather ran a rice store in Shanghai during World War II. The store helped many poor Jewish neighbors by providing rice and flour without expecting repayment. In 1940, one night, a Jewish couple asked him for help because their child was sick. They offered a valuable family item as a guarantee. Despite giving them a large sum of money, they never returned. Years later, Jin Wenjen received the family treasure and decided to find the Jewish family. She hopes to reunite the handbag with its original owners, showcasing it at the Shanghai Jewish Refugees Museum. With the help of the China Silk Museum, the bag has been restored after 75 years and awaits its rightful owners. After World War II, Jewish refugees, grateful to Shanghai for providing refugee from Nazi persecution, saw the city as a temporary haven due to cultural differences. Once the war ended, they sought new homelands, longing to reunite with family lost during the war. This museum was particularly special to me because I gained new sights into the suffering of Jews during their World War II. Thanks for watching. Till next time. Bye-bye.